everyone. Welcome to the next installment of Charts in Perspective, where we use charts to dive into the world of economics and financial markets. I'm Jennifer Nash, an economic and market research analyst for Vetify. Today, we're going to examine historical bull and bear market trends. First, let's quickly review the difference between a bull and a bear market. A bull market occurs when stocks are rising, the economy is expanding, and there's overall optimism towards market conditions. We're currently in a bull market and have been since last year. On the other hand, a bear market occurs when stock prices are falling, the economy is contracting, and there's overall pessimism towards market conditions. The most recent bear market was a few years ago in 2022. An easy and helpful way that I like to remember the difference is thinking of the way each of these animals attack their opponents. A bull thrusts its horns up while a bear swipes its paws down. So now that we have that established, let's dive into the charts. Our first chart here shows the inflation adjusted S&P composite index dating back to 1871. An obvious feature is the pattern of long-term alternations between uptrends highlighted in purple and downtrends highlighted in red. Market historians call these secular bull and bear markets from the Latin word saculum, meaning long period of time. The implicit rule I followed with this chart is that the purple periods show secular trends that have led to new all-time real highs. And the red periods in between are our secular bear markets, regardless of their cyclical rallies. For example, notice the rally from 1932 to 1937. Despite its strength, it remains a cycle within a secular bear market because a new real all-time high was not reached. At the rally's peak in 1937, the index was still 29% below the real all-time high from 1929. The S&P just reached a new real all-time high last month, surpassing its previous peak from November 2021, and we're now 38% above the trough from October 2022. This table here summarizes the underlying data of the previous chart. If we look closely, we can extract a few interesting facts about these secular patterns. Since that first trough back in June 1877 to last month's peak, secular bull market gains have totaled 2,218% for an average of 370% per bull market. However, if we exclude the current bull market we're in, the average is even higher at 436%. Meanwhile, secular bear market losses have totaled a negative 283% for an average of negative 57%. Additionally, we've been in a bull market for 89 years across this time frame versus 58 for bear markets. That last bullet may come as a surprise, helping us to realize that bear markets accounted for less than 40% of the highlighted time frame. Now let's take a look at the same chart, this time with a regression trend line through the data. This line is the best fit that essentially divides the monthly values so that the total distance of the data points above the line equals the total distance below. We've been above the trend line since July 2009 and currently sit 163% above it. Our last chart here, we've created a regression channel for the S&P composite. The two dotted lines have the same slope as the regression line, with the top of the channel based on last month's all-time real high and the bottom of the channel based on the 1932 trough. The two lines help us visualize the price range the S&P composite has historically moved within and help us identify key levels of support and resistance. Again, we're currently sitting 163% above the trend line. Well, that's all for our discussion today. Thanks for tuning in. For more economic and market insights, you can find my content regularly on the Advisor Perspectives website under the AP Chart section.